Hello everyone, I am Matt Seuss. I am an OM System Ambassador. Used to be an Olympus educator, but now I'm an OM System Ambassador. And I am so excited because look at what I have right here. Yes, this is the brand new OM-1, the WOW camera that has been rumored for the longest time and that is now finally here. I'm recording this the day before the release on February 14th. The release is February 15th, 2022. I've only had this camera for literally just a couple days. I do get to keep it for a couple weeks to test it out and really put it through its paces. But right now in this video, I'm gonna do a quick rundown on some of the key specs that I think are really important for the type of photography that I do. I'm a landscape and wildlife photographer and night sky photographer too. And I'll tell you some of my favorite features on this, give you an overview of the camera Camera, compare it to the EM-1 Mark III and I'll also show you a couple of sample photos that I've taken with it too so let's get underway here right away and what I want to do first is really just talk about some of the new features on here this is really exciting this is a wow camera I am super excited about this this has the TruePix X processor which gives three times more processing power it features dual UHS-2 card slots. Live ND has been boosted up to ND64. We are talking freeze proof down to minus 10 degrees Celsius, up to 50 frames per second in continuous autofocus, and up to 120 frames per second in single autofocus. High res shots up to two and a half times faster. The computational power in this is up to 60 times faster than before. It features a backside illuminated quad pixel bare pattern stacked CMOS sensor and it has a splash proof and dust proof rating of IP53. Now all this stuff I'm going to be go going over just really briefly but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the specs here just to, just to go over and show you a comparison mode between this camera and the EM-1X and the, and the Mark III as well. And if we take a look at this here on this quick sheet, all of the stuff that's in green are the, you know, the improved features of this. And if we take a look at this real fast here, the viewfinder on the, uh, on the OM-1 greatly improved. It's an OLED uh, viewfinder now. And we got a boost from 2.36 million dots up to 5.76 uh, 5 million dots. So this, this screen, the EVF, is really vastly improved. Uh, you're able to see the sharpness a lot better, a lot more clarity when you're doing your photography. Another cool feature is the in-camera charging and powering. You can power this while it is charging. So if you have an extra uh, external USB pack, you can charge this camera while you're taking pictures connected to that external USB pack. So you may not need to buy as many batteries. And just to let you know, this does take a new battery. We'll get into that in just a little bit. The autofocus system, we've now jumped up to a cross type 1053 autofocus fields and that gives you also 100% viewfinder coverage too. So 1053 focusing points throughout the entire viewfinder. That is a big jump from what we had before. AF sensitivity down to minus 8 EVs. It used to be down to minus 6 EVs so we got a boost in the AF sensitivity too. I already talked about the frames per second. Uh, big boost on the frames per second. And let's go ahead and take a look down here. Just scroll down just a little bit further here. We'll go through this. There is a new version of Olympus Capture software that's going to be coming out too. It's supposed to be in Workplace. There's supposed to be some really cool uh, noise reduction feature inside the Olympus Workspace too. I can't wait to give that a try. Uh, splash proof, dust proof, and freeze proof, IP53 uh, rating. And all of these extra features, it only weighs 19 more grams than the EM1 Mark III. Now let me just go ahead and talk about a couple extra features that are here. Uh, this, this new sensor is fabulous, still 20 megapixel sensor, but we're talking now up to a two-stop noise uh, performance improvement and also up to a one-stop dynamic range improvement too. Honestly, those two stops of noise, re uh, noise uh, performance, that alone is almost worth it for me in the type of photography that I do to get that boost in the uh, better noise and also the dynamic range too. Uh, we have what's called a cross-quad pixel AF phase detection autofocus in four directions, all cross-type for every direction, 1,053 focusing areas again at 120 frames per second, 100% sensor coverage. That is crazy. 
Our uh, ISO, the high ISO sensitivity, has now been boosted up to 25,600. Uh, I already talked about this, uh, this OLED EVF, sharper, faster, and bigger, big time improvement on the, uh, on the EVF. This is something that Olympus uh, OM system, they really needed to improve, and they really did. The three inch LCD screen on the back did get a slight improvement too. Not as much as I hoped for, I wish I had a little bit better resolution, but it is a little bit better improvement than the older cameras. Now let's talk about what comes with the camera when you get it. So you're looking at obviously the camera there. I uh, got a cool strap, OM system, OM1 strap. We have, in addition to that, comes with a little mini flash for it. Uh, I've seen these before with Olympus. They're uh, always cool just to have kick around just in case you need it. Uh, we got a couple of uh, accessory clamps here. So this is gonna be useful if you're using cables going into the camera so you can uh, secure the cables a little bit better so they don't pop out as easy and possibly damage any ports in there. Uh, we also have a USB 3 charging cable and also a plug to uh, power it up. It does not come with a standalone battery charger, but this at least allows you to plug this in and get your battery charged throughout an outlet. And you can also plug that into a, again, your computer or a uh, USB 3 uh, battery pack, and you can charge your camera as well. And it comes with a little carrying bag, uh, probably for all those little tiny accessories that we see there. Now mine didn't come with a manual or any paperwork at all or anything like that. This is an early version here that I'm, I'm lucky to have. So uh, it's probably missing a couple things like that. So no worries here on my part. Let's go ahead and start talking about this, comparing this to the EM1 Mark III. And if we take a look here, let me go ahead and switch cameras so we can get a good shot of both of these cameras. And you know, at first glance, they are pretty identical. Uh, very, very small difference in size. Again, it just weighs 19 more grams than the EM1 Mark III. What is great is that we still have the Olympus name on top for at least this uh, camera generation here. Taking a look at the front, the only big difference is the naming over here. And so we got OM system right down in the front. Otherwise, visually in the front, very similar, except when we start look, getting up to the top here. Now on the top, we had the control dial that was also attached to the shutter uh, in our EM1 Mark III. That dial has now been moved down below the shutter, so it's separate from the shutter. If we go ahead and take a look at the side, the only main difference on the side is this rubberized coating. That is where the cards go. We can open this up and we have the dual UHC2 card slots. And let's go ahead and we'll just take a look at this side here. You can see that the side is very similar. And let's go ahead and take a look at the back. Now the back has been changed just a little bit. Let me go ahead and actually close this LCD screen for a second because even the LCD screen has been rubberized, got a little bit of a rubber texture to the, uh, to the, uh, to the back side of the LCD screen. Where if we remember, if we take a look at the EM1 Mark III, had a hard surface shiny and had Olympus engraved in it. But again, a little bit of a rubberized protector now when this LCD screen is closed. So let's take a look at some other differences here. We have a dedicated autofocus button for rear focusing. Very cool to have just a separate button dedicated for that. Our ISO button is still in the same place there. The rear dial has been lowered. It used to be right up on top here, right on the very top of the camera, but it has been lowered now and recessed in there. We can see the bigger viewfinder that we have here as well, really nice and pronounced. So they did make some slight changes to the back of the camera, but not enough where that you're gonna all of a sudden feel uncomfortable using the camera right off the bat because all your muscle memory for all the buttons are all right in that same area. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the camera now. We can see some slight adjustments that they made to the camera. We can see that this button here, these. Uh, the AF button and the drive button has been slightly redesigned a little bit. Uh, they've, been, they've been recessed just a little. On off button, a little bit of a change there too. And again, now we can see that this is where, right over here, we used to have the dial up on top, but that rear dial has now been recessed into the back. And it might be hard to see in this video, but the body does look just a hair thicker throughout here. And just a slight difference, a little bit more of an increase in the grip, which uh, in this grip feels really fantastic. Now they also did some changes to the menu system too. And let me go ahead and 
get rid of my EM1 Mark III, and let's go ahead and plug this in so that I can show you the changes that they made to the menu system. And I think you're gonna like this. They redesigned the entire menu system to be a lot more user-friendly. And let's go ahead and I'll switch cameras over to that. And let's take a look at that, some of the changes that they have inside here. Let me get out of live comp mode and we'll take a look at the menu. And you can see right off the bat here, this is now going, instead of up and down, everything goes from left to right. And so I'll start from right from the very beginning here. We have uh, under camera one, got our basic settings, go to camera two, got the picture mode and white balance settings. Keep on going, noise reduction, exposure, metering, flash, drive mode, image stabilization. And then the computational modes are now here under the camera two. And I'll just go here and cycle through all the different menu settings here that you can do. You can go ahead and pause this video if you wanted to focus on anything in particular. But this menu is a lot better than the older menu. So I think you guys are gonna like this. Definitely a nice improvement. And then at the very end, we have the, uh, and then at the very end, we have the My menu. So this is where you can save all your favorite settings so you have quick and easy access to it. You can see right now I have this set up for subject detection. This is something new too in the autofocus on this camera. So we have cars, we have planes, we have trains, we have birds, and now new, we have dogs and cats. Now speaking of dogs, Olympus sent me a video that shows a dog in action, and I wanna go ahead and play that for you because that is really impressive. Let's go ahead and take a look at the autofocusing that they have on this dog. Running through some, uh, well, we've got the nice sound effects here, but check out the autofocus following this dog. This is some of that AI autofocusing that they've been really improving, and with this TruePic 10 processor, allows you to really track this dog going through. Even going through here, the autofocus is still picking up on the dog. Now, I haven't had a chance to try the autofocus yet. Again, I just got this camera just a couple days ago. So this is something I'm gonna be really excited to see how this works and also to see if this dogs and cats work on other animals like elk or like moose. And while we are here, I do wanna talk about some of the accessories that are available for this. This takes a brand new vertical grip. This is the uh, HLD 10, it looks like. Uh, so this is a new vertical grip. The old vertical grip is not compatible at all. And this is because it has new batteries in it too. We can see how it looks on the camera here, the front and the back. And there's also a wireless and wired new remote. When it's wireless, it's operated on Bluetooth or you can wire that directly into the camera. This is the new battery that they have. And again, it doesn't come with a charger, but you can end up buying a dual system charger. So you can charge two batteries at once. I'm definitely gonna be ordering one of those. And we were talking about uh, splash proof. Check out this video that they have here that they released, just showing, <laughs> just showing just how incredibly prepared this is for the elements. Now this splash proof, this is the world's only IP53 compatible system, camera system in the world. So don't be afraid to take this out in the elements to get your shot. So that is really something. Let's go back into the camera menu again. And I'll pop that up over here. We'll get that onto the screen. And just take a look at something else here. I had this in live uh, or in live comp mode before. And I wanted to show you something here too. Uh, Live Comp can now go beyond ISO 12, uh, 1600. We can go now in Live Comp all the way up to ISO 6400. So that is a huge improvement as well on Live Comp. And here's another cool improvement on Live Comp. You can handhold Live Comp. And I'll show you that in just a minute and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. Uh, just another couple uh, things that we have here that are a little bit different. Uh, the, um, the information that we're presented with, they have a new way of showing us, you know, if your camera is level or tilted and uh, both in the vertical and the horizontal.
But again, I wanted to show you a couple sample photos from the live comp. Um, again, I haven't only, I've only had this for a couple days, haven't gotten out shooting a whole lot on it, but uh, live comp was definitely something I wanted to test out and see how well it was working, especially because you can do handheld live comp now. And that is pretty crazy. Now, let's just say you're not gonna be able to do a half hour or an hour star trail with the handheld live comp. You're still gonna wanna put that on a tripod, but I'm sure there's a lot of creative possibilities you can think of with live comp, even handheld. And let me go ahead and show you that. So let's get back to my camera and we'll go ahead and go into the uh, image review. And let's take a look at a couple of photos here that I've already starred and selected to show you what is happening with this awesome new camera. Let's go over here and we'll take a look at this photo. And let's go ahead and look at the info on this. Now, this was shot at half a second, f1.8, and this was 11 shots combined on handheld live comp. So this was a, what, about a five and a half second photo. This was shot with my 17 millimeter f1.2 lens. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. Look at this, this is a half a second. We can see the stars clearly up in the sky. Uh, this house had a little bit of light on it, perfect kept it nice and sharp and we got the uh, car trails going by so live comp half a second intervals for about five or six seconds totally doable on this new camera let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other things too because i wanted to talk about high res mode and that is one of my favorite things on this camera is the high res mode because in handheld high res you're able to go ahead and do a uh, a 50 megapixel image and look at this, this is a 50 megapixel image. The sharpness on handheld high res and tripod high res has been improved a lot. And we're just looking at the file right in the camera here. On the computer, this is amazing with the sharpness and detail on this. Let's go ahead and I have one that was shot with, uh, in tripod high res mode. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one here tripod high res mode at night with some stars let's go ahead and take a look at the settings on this this was shot with my 17 millimeter the f 1.2 lens two second exposure in high res mode at f2 iso 1600 and just a little bit dark but i can easily bring up the shadows and i did and i, I have an amazing detailed photo 80 megapixel photo of this at night with the stars. Now I did have some help with the moonlight, so that allowed me to use a little bit of a shorter sh shutter speed, but tripod high res mode, 80 megapixel image, this looks fantastic. And while I'm talking about the high res mode, I wanna say that they have improved the speed. I said two and a half times they improved the speed for high res mode, both handheld and for tripod mode. It is blazing fast compared to what it used to be. It is really a big improvement and I love using the high res modes. And again, now that they're a little bit sharper to begin with, I used to have to use Topaz Sharpener before. I don't even think I'm gonna to need to use Topaz Sharpener anymore for those high res shots. They are coming out really nice and detailed in my limited testing. And again, with that speed improvement on the high res, that is extremely welcome. Let's go ahead and take a look at one other photo here. Let me go ahead and get that loaded up. And I wanted to show you a live comp, this shot here. Let's take a look at the settings on this. So this was with my, uh, so this was shot at 13 millimeter. This is with the eight to 25 millimeter F4 Pro lens. I was using 20 second uh, exposure intervals at F4.5 ISO 1250. And this was uh, 45 shots put together in, in live comp. So this was about a, uh, let's see, about 15 minutes worth of exposure time. And look at this, no noise at all in the sky. Really fabulous. Scrolling all the way down, great detail throughout. Now, in terms of the high ISO, uh, you know, whether we're getting two full stops of uh, improvement, like they said, so far my initial testing, it's looking really promising. I did some tests at 6400, looks a lot cleaner details a lot more details in the trees at the high iso setting uh, that i was doing some night shots on i have this camera for another couple weeks i'm going to be doing a lot more testing of the night sky so i'll be able to report back to you to let you know 
how much of an improvement it is. It'd be really interesting to know, is that two stops still applicable when we're up in the 6400 ISO? Or does that shrink down just a little bit um, in terms of the boost in the, uh, in the noise performance? So I'll be looking forward to testing that and comparing it to my EM1 Mark III to see how much of an improvement we have. Now there are a lot of things to talk about with this brand new camera. I've just only scratched the surface on this. Wanted to give you a quick overview and highlight. I am definitely going to be doing a lot more videos on this. If you like what you saw so far, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel down below there. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that you guys like this content and that you want to see more content too. If you have questions on the camera, be sure to let me know also on that. And in conclusion, I want to say that this camera is really, really impressive. Just in my short time using this, I've already fallen in love with it. I'm definitely ordering a pair of them. I'm gonna, these are gonna be my main cameras. Uh, I used to use the EM1X for my wildlife and the EM1 Mark III for my landscape and night sky shooting. These are now both gonna be dedicated to that. So I'll have one, one of the uh, OM1s for my landscape and another one for wildlife. The improvements in the noise, is big for me. The improvements in the speed of the high res modes and the quality of the images now, super important to me. All those focusing points, 1,053 focusing points through the entire viewfinder, that is huge. The live comp, oh boy, <laughs> there is a lot to like about this camera. And it is coming out real soon. You can pre-order, I believe, right now, and it is scheduled to be shipping in March. So once again, I am Matt Seuss, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.